Things playing green, red aggro. This will be a fast one, so if you're interested in a backup match at home, uh, I have a feeling we'll get to that. So, uh, some really important cards for, for Simon in this matchup are his various shock effects. He has Magma Jets, he has Lightning Strikes, Searing Bloods, Wild Slashes, and the Green Red Aggro deck does come out of the gates with some pretty low top creatures. Even when you start getting to three mana, you're looking at still things like Boon Seder, Goblin Rabble Master, so the Dragon Claw, so the shock effects are very important for Simon in this matchup. Fire Drinker Seder into the red zone. Just a passing of the turn, two mana at the ready. When you have a player who opts not to pump, you have to think a little bit. Some heaters coming, yeah. Walker's just gonna pass the turn. Here's some Magma Jet that's gonna go upstairs. Lock Chrissy to scry. Walker already down to 16. Take a look at the top two cards. So, Chrissy's list here playing only 19 mountains. It does go all the way up to three mana game one. Two copies of Goblin Rabble Master in the main deck alongside two copies of Hordling Outburst. But a pretty low-end build. Also playing with the new Mardu Scout, which is a nice addition for Mono Red Aggro lists. Huh? Chris will take a draw. Gets him out. In for two. There's a Lightning Strike, so Chris will have to take three. Mountain there. Just a passing of the turn. So he had a lot of burn spells in hand, that's for sure. We'll see how Avery wants to play around this stuff. There's a forest to start. Does have a copy of Air of the Wilds in hand. Which he elected not to play on turn two, sensing that there was a removal spell on Simon's side there, which he correctly sniffed out. Yeah, not playing anything this turn either. So upstairs goes the Lightning Strike. Walker down to 13. Christy will take a draw. Picked up a copy of Stoke the Flames. All he can do is pass the turn back. Here's a Boon Seder. That's a Searing Blood. Good target Ugh. for that. Walker down to 10. Yeah, Searing Blood is very, very good against these green red aggro lists. As, as I mentioned before, a lot of their three mana plays still get killed. So it's a great tempo play and deals a ton of damage. Rabble Master was the draw. But now's a good time to get Shaman of the Great Hunt into play. In for four, potentially. We could see Wild Slash or, or Magma Spray here. Four copies in, in Simon's deck, but uh, Avery is at 10. So even with Wild Slash in hand, depending on the rest of the contents of Simon's hand, it's not clear he would want to use a Wild Slash. If the rest of his hand is, say, Stoke the Flames, you might say, okay, I'll try to burn you out from here. Oh. Chris, you'll draw. Copy of Goblin Rabble Master. Great time to draw that with the shields down. Yep. Uh, you can tell there's some apprehension on Simon's side of the table here because he doesn't want to get hit by the Shaman yet again next turn and then have it get out of Lightning Strike range. This is a really tough spot for Simon to get into because, you know, is he trying to burn out or is he still trying to control the board? He's got to pick a direction. I think he's made his choice. He will lightning strike the Shaman and pass the turn back. Three mana, that's a Rabble Master. Goblin token gonna come in. In the red zone. Chris, will go down to 12. Time to take a draw step. Mountains, what he's found. Now, of course, the big question here always when playing a mono aggro deck is when do you shift gears and kill the creatures as opposed to just trying to kill the player? Exactly. And I think that Simon has tried to split the difference this game in a, a way that I'm not a huge fan of. I think that he probably should have just ignored the Shaman of the Great Hunt at least for one more turn because his hands all burn spells. So, uh, your opponent, your green-red aggro opponent, their deck's way more powerful than yours. Once you start getting to four or five mana, they're going to be doing much more powerful stuff. So I think you have to cross your fingers, hope they can't burn you out, and hope to leverage your Stokes and Lightning Strikes to finish out the game. You saw a Dragon Claw was the draw for Avery Walker this turn. Does have a copy of Creator's Claws at the ready if he wants to clear the Rebel Master out of the way. Got to tap four mana, and there is Creator's Claws. So gonna get that Rabble Master out of the way, trigger, get a Goblin Token, here's a whole bunch of damage, it'll be six of it. All of a sudden, Christie's facing lethal next turn, he's already down to six. Chris will draw a card, it's a copy of Lightning Strike. And had he perhaps ignored that Shaman of the Great Hunt, he may have been able to burn out Avery Walker. It's a tough game because, you know, letting your opponent just have an uncontested Shaman of the Great Hunt, it, that comes with some dangers too. Simon still might lose the game. 
but you see Avery's resources left over here. He's still got two copies of Air of the Wilds. He's got, he's got cards left over here. There's just two of Dragon Claw. Looks like it might be a little complication on when the spells were played, but yep. here's an attack. So everything is cleared up as Christy goes down to four. There's another mountain. That'll come in to stoke the flames. Sun wants to make sure he knows exactly what this does. Pass the turn back. Walker will take a draw. Temple of Abandon very quickly comes into play. Take a look at the top card. It becomes the bottom. And so the flames will take care of the Dragon Claw. Christy goes down to two. There's a Chandra. That's going upstairs. Put him down to one. Now he's coming from two angles. And yep. that's a little too hard to come back from. He's got to get the tokens on the table and the Chandra. That seems impossible. The draw step is his last one for this game. Avery Walker's going to win game number one here over Simon Christy. Greener Aggro up a game here over Mono Red Aggro. Now we will turn our attention to the sideboard. Predictably, you have the Mono Red Aggro deck list in hand, so I'll let you start with those 15. Two copies of Arc Lightning, three copies of Prophetic Flame Speaker, two copies of Peak Eruption, a Searing Blood, a Scour in the Sands, one copy of Harnessed by Force, three Eidolon of the Great Rebel, one copy of a Mountain, uh, one would assume coming in when some of the more expensive spells come in. So I definitely like bringing in the additional Searing Blood effect. Avery's deck is very susceptible with sort of a Dragon Claw, Goblin Route Master, Boon Seder, and so forth. So more of that's very good. I think it's reasonable bringing the extra copies of Arc Lightning, though uh, Avery's deck is not terribly susceptible to that. I like bringing in the one Harness by Force, as the game is kind of a swingy damage race. There's cards like Storm Breath Dragon in Avery's list, which are very nice to take. I would not go to Idol on the Great Revolt because Avery is also capable of damage racing. Even though Simon's the more aggressive deck of the two, uh, Avery's deck is capable of aggression too, so I don't like bringing in the Eidolon. Other side of things here for Walker. He does have two copies of Zen, it goes to the Reveler. Three copies of Faded Conflagration. Two Back to Nature, two Arc Lightning, three Magma Sprays, and then three copies of Whisperwood Elemental. What do we like here? The Red Removal. The two Arc Lightnings and the three Magma Sprays will do a lot to keep Avery's head above water and allow him to get his more power plays like Chandra, like Stormbreath Dragon. I could see Xenagos be more powerful than some of his other four mana plays, though potentially not. Okay. Well, those are the options there for both players, and game number two will be underway here in what will be a pretty quick one. So again, expect a backup match for you guys in just a little bit. Though, we will talk about season four and what's on the schedule there. We're going to kick it off in Cincinnati with a modern open series. Cincinnati, and then we go to Worcester for a standard open. Milwaukee, which will also be standard. Then Indianapolis, October 3rd and 4th. Of course, one of our favorite cities to go to. A great convention city, and attendance is always great. Standard open in Atlanta, the 10th and 11th. We take a week off and then go to St. Louis for a legacy open. Modern in Dallas, another standard open in Philadelphia, November 7th and 8th. A limited Grand Prix in Atlanta, November 13th through 15th. We take a week off, legacy open in New Jersey. A standard open in Denver, which we have not gone to in a very long time. Excited about that event. Our season four invitational in Seattle with a standard open series and standard and modern as the invitational formats, December 13th, 11th through 13th, with me, you, and Matthias in the booth. And then, of course, the Players' Championship to close out the year, Roanoke, Virginia, December 19th and 20th. The big one. That one's going to be, I mean, it's all going to be fun. Who are we kidding? But covering that tournament last year was one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had. It was just a lot of fun to watch, a lot of fun to cover. It was just an enjoyable experience. And as we all know, Brad Nelson, the defending champion, he's the first one who's punched his ticket there. And we are going to work our way through the year and figure out who the other 15 are going to be. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to figure out. Uh, this tournament has a lot to do with it now with Jim Davis not in the second day of competition. Joe Lissette with a great opportunity to close some ground. He did pick up a loss to start off day two and is probably looking at a 5-0 to make the top eight now. Well, we'll definitely keep our eyes on Joe's performance this weekend, but we turn our attention back to this match between Avery Walker and Simon Christie. Green Red Aggro and Mono Red Aggro, two decks that are pretty well represented here in day number two. Green Red Aggro, eight copies of that in the day number two. And as far as Mono Red is concerned, six of those. So a decent amount among yep. those 95 players. A good representation. It's format showing that you can maybe be a little more aggressive than I think people think. You've also got red-white aggro at 15 copies, and then Obzon aggro at 10 copies. So 
This format, I think, is a lot faster than people give it credit for. For me, the big tilt is how good is Searing Blood? That, to me, is the most powerful card available to mono red aggro decks in standard. If Searing Blood is good, if it's a card you can reasonably play three or four copies of in your main deck, I think the deck's legitimate. If not, I, I don't think the deck has the raw power to compete. To me, that's the big swing card. Well, there's a Searing Blood in hand right now. It was good last game. We'll see how it is this game. As Chris is going to start off with a Mountain Man, a Monastery Swiss Spear. So Walker is immediately down to 19. We saw Simon get off to a fast start the last game. We'll see if he can capitalize on it. Simon Chrissy also playing with one copy of Goblin Heel Cutter, another nice addition. Wooded Foothills in a passing of the turn. We'll go back Christie's way. And Heel Cutter's the draw. All right, right on time. Attack here for one. And just a boring old passing of the turn. Walker going to sacrifice his Wooded Foothills, go down to 17. There is a mountain. And we'll see if Avery cooperates this turn, playing something that Simon can hit with a Searing Blood. Temple of Bannon looks like it may be the land for this turn. Though Forest is also an option. We could just see a turn of Forest, Air of the Wilds, which Simon would love. He would be thrilled with that sequence. There's a temple. I'm sure he's okay with this, too. Yes. <laughs> Simon will draw. A mountain. He's got some options here on what he can do. One of them is dash the heel cutter, and that's what looks like it's going to take place. So this is going to be attack for four. That's timely, timely removal spell there. Magma Spray getting the job done. Very nice tempo swing there, though not necessarily worse for Simon to keep the Swift Spear. That's a pretty big investment every turn in that heel cutter. Yeah. Walker has tried his best to play around Searing Blood. We saw it in the first game. We see it here, too. Could have just easily slammed down Air of the Wild and just hope for the best, but he chose not to do that. He's definitely conscious of it. It's a huge swing. It's so much damage. There's also one Scry Land left in All his right. hand, too, so he's got to figure out how does that fit into my curve here. Get, get Rabble Master, Goblin two. Token, in for one. First of Chris, he's down to 19. 145 players, one, four, five. Chrissy will draw. We are going to have eight Copy of Hordling Outburst. Now things are a little bit interesting because do you want a Hordling Outburst this turn or would you prefer to just Searing Blood get that stupid Rabble Master off the table and keep coming on in? Looks like he's going to go the second route. I, I think that I would actually prefer the Hordling Outburst that turn. You get a Prowess Trigger so the Rabble Master can't block. The Rabble Master compels the tokens on every side to attack and then you get to untap and Searing Blood the Rabble Master and attack with a bunch of stuff. I understand the instinct, just get the route master off the table. But I think in that spot, Simon can be a little bit riskier and just cast Hordling Outburst. Temple of Abandon comes in, a little scry action there. Here's an air of the wilds, and just the passing of the turn. Lightning Strike, gonna get that creature off the table. Christy will draw. It's a mountain. There's a Hordling Outburst. Now to trigger Prowess. Don't love the timing of the Lightning Strike. Feels like he misses out on a point of damage there. Well, it, he might miss out on a point of damage. It's possible he draws something to cast this turn. Sure. And then he's out the spell he could cast. I think I actually like Simon's play of Lightning Strike in here because it feels like Avery is likely to chump block with the token this turn just from the one Prowess trigger. Avery didn't, but it, it's almost juicy enough for him to chump block there that I, I think I prefer Lightning Striking when Simon did. Ashcloud Phoenix. Heck of a blocker. Pass the turn back over to Christy. Christy will draw. Picks up another mountain. Doesn't have a ton of lands in his deck, but he's drawn quite a few here. Yeah, he's got 19 and one in the sideboard for, I, I assume, when he brings in some of his three mana spells like Prophetic, Flame Speaker, Arc Lightning, Harness by Force. Peak Eruption, which he may or may not have brought in. I'm not a big fan of it. 
in this matchup, I'd probably only bring in Peak Eruption against Chain of the Rock decks, but it's possible he brought it in here. Yeah, Scott Phoenix has really made this difficult. No really good attacks here for Christie. I mean, an Alpha Strike is not atrocious here. And the problem is that it's only going to get worse for Simon from this spot. Avery's going to keep flooding the board with blockers. So even though it, it is not great for Simon that the, the Phoenix morphs against the block again, I, I think he has to choose this spot to get into damage because he might not get another opportunity. He has to put himself in a situation to maybe just draw running burn spells now. Yeah, the two points of damage here is very valuable. You know, it means that something like Stoke the Flames plus Lightning Strike or Searing Blood means that it's lethal. And Simon's at 19. Avery has to play defense for a while, so you have a lot of draw steps. Temple of Mana will come in. Scry will put the top card to the bottom. So there's land number five. You can see Walker Sand, Shaman of the Great Hunt, another Ash Cloud Phoenix. Air of the Wilds as well. But if you're Walker, now it's about trying to get this game closed out. Yeah. This is a good way to start. There's a Shaman of the Great Hunt. Now, how aggressive will he get? Pretty aggressive. Uh, it's possible he wants to get more aggressive in that spot. If he attacks with the token as well, on the way back, Simon knocks him down to five on board, which means that he still needs two burn spells to kill him. It means that both of his creatures are out of Searing Blood range, and it means you're pretty close to ending the game. Uh, so that's a pretty aggressive play from, from Avery, but I actually might prefer something even more aggressive than that, getting in with the morph as well. Frenzied Goblin comes down. Been a long time since we've seen that one. I think a card that most people expected to have Mono Red, to kind of help Mono Red get more on the map. It definitely does help. Uh, against Corsair, Krufix, Siege Rhino decks, it's a, it's a big help, but uh, it doesn't tip the scales that, that much. I have a history with this card. I'm a huge fan, but it's not going to make or break this deck. It's just a nice addition. Shaman of the Green Hunt coming on in again, this time for five. So now it's going to tick up, become a six power creature. There's a use of a Dragon Claw. This is an Air of the Wilds. And now we're gumming up the board in such a fashion that Christie's probably going to do some jump blocking and peel some burn spells. And not only that, but it's actually worse than that because the uh, Yusova can take the Frenzy Goblin, and then the Frenzy Goblin can make something unable to block. So uh, Simon actually has to hold back everything on defense if he wants to block with anything. The Wild Slash was a timely draw. Yes. Might have to use that to kill the Yusova. Well, it's four power, and the activated power matters a lot right now. So uh, it's yeah. going anywhere. It has to go there. There's a mountain. I guess Simon does have the option of just passing, allowing Avery to move to combat and hoping that Avery messes up. The problem is that right now the Yusova's activated power matters a lot. Yeah. So his hand's almost forced to just do something right now. Yeah. You're also playing against a green deck too, so you have this concern, I think, always been playing against a green deck about pump spells. For sure. Maybe I have this in my head just because of Aaron Barrage and his love for Gather Courage, but it's something that I think you always have to think about when you're playing against green. The likelihood is kind of low, but you know, some players do run cards like the Common Mints, and you know, we saw Boonsader earlier. Yep. So it's certainly not out of the question. The draw hover is just a land. Walker with Ashclaw Phoenix and I believe Elvish Mystic in hand. Now kind of surveying the board on exactly how he wants to go about doing things. Can't forget that that, that, that morph in play is an Ashclaw Phoenix and does have six mana to unmorph it if he'd like to go that direction. Well, on the board, the what Avery has is lethal because he can take the Frenzy Goblin, make the Frenzy Goblin uh, make a token unable to block, and then even if Simon Chump blocks the Shaman, Lethal is coming across. Sure. So Simon's hand is forced here. The Wild Slash does take care of the use of a Dragon Claw. So I'm not going to allow him to take anything there. But again, now we have to see how Walker wants to attack because Walker's goal here is to get this game over with as fast as he possibly can while making it so that he doesn't die of some sort of wonky attack. Here comes the Shaman and the Morph. 
Goblin token is going to block here. Looks like two damage is going to come across. I'll put a counter on that. There's Ashcloud Phoenix. Here's Elvis Mystic. Walker's hand is empty. Christie's going to need a really good one. It was a spell, though we didn't get a great look. Perhaps another frenzied goblin, I think. Avery's been very cautious here. Make sure that nothing weird happens. Maybe lead back a spare blocker, even though, you know, in some spots it looks like he's pretty safe. Just he's got a commanding position on the board, doesn't want to get punked out. I think it's been a really nice balance of picking his spots appropriately. Yep. When to get aggressive, when to kind of hold back and measure a little bit, and, you know, how he can close this game out accordingly to make sure that he doesn't die to anything kind of random, mm -hmm. which is a pretty tough skill when you're playing against Mono Red. For sure. Sometimes you get too aggressive. Sometimes you can get way too cautious and give him too many draw steps. It's a copy of Arc Lightning. Huh. We've got one there and two on air of the wilds. So Ashcloud Phoenix is going to turn down. That'll be morph number two. Both morphs in play for Walker are Ashcloud Phoenix. But no good attacks to be had, just a passing of the turn. Walker will draw a copy of Crater's Claws, which might make things really easy. I, I think, think it so. does. I think so. Yeah, he can cost for seven here. That's going to go upstairs. And that's good enough to get the job done. Avery Walker is going to take care of Simon Christie. Two games to zero. Green Red Aggro downs Mono Red Aggro. And for Avery, he moves on to nine and two here in Houston. Very good start for this deck.